In this video, we'll be looking at a concept called the factor theorem. We'll be using uh, the factor theorem to eventually solve problems like the one on your screen right now, where we know the equation, perhaps, of the uh, volume of an object, and we want to factor this equation, factor this polynomial, to find the different dimensions. So let's start with a little investigation. Let's remember the remainder theorem from yesterday. To find the remainder when we divide this polynomial by x minus 1. So just recall that the remainder theorem states that when we have a polynomial evaluated at b, the answer that we get would be the remainder if we were to do the division. So let's do this division. x minus 1 is being divided into x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. So how many times do we need to, or what do we need to multiply x by to get x cubed? Well, we need to multiply it by x squared. And then we bring that down. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 1 is negative x squared. And we subtract. I get 3x squared bring down the negative x. What do I multiply x by to get 3x squared? I would multiply it by 3x. And then 3x times negative 1. Negative 3x, subtracting again. Negative x, take away negative 3x positive 2x, bring down the negative 2. If we multiply x by 2, we get 2x minus 2, and we subtract this, and we end up with a remainder of 0. So if I write the corresponding statement to check the division, which is my polynomial is equal to the divisor, whatever that divisor was, x minus b, times the quotient, plus the remainder. Here I have my polynomial, my original polynomial is equal to x minus 1 times the quotient, x squared plus 3x plus 2 plus my remainder of 0. So my original polynomial, x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2, is equal to x minus 1 times that quotient, x squared plus 3x plus 2 plus the remainder of 0, which normally when we have uh, addition of 0 or subtraction of 0, we don't need to write it. So I can just leave my statement like this, which means, in essence, that what we divided by x minus 1 is a factor. So this leads us to what the factor theorem states, which is x minus b is a factor of our polynomial if and only if the polynomial evaluated at b is equal to 0. And likewise, if I have a more complicated divisor, ax minus b, that would be a factor of p in the polynomial if and only if p evaluated at b over a is equal to 0. So if we use the remainder theorem and we get no remainder, that tells us that our divisor x minus b or ax minus b is a factor of the polynomial. So as an example, using the factor theorem, we can determine the factors of a polynomial without having to do the long division. For example, we can determine if x minus 3 and x plus 2 are factors 
of the polynomial p of x by calculating p evaluated at 3 and p evaluated at negative 2. So if I evaluate p of 3 and I work through the math, I get a remainder of 0, which tells me that x minus 3 is a factor. Why don't you try p evaluated at negative 2 on your own and see what you get. When I evaluate p of negative 2, I get an answer of 40, a remainder of 40, which means that x plus 2 is not a factor. So what we're building up to be able to do is take complicated polynomials that have degrees higher than 2 and factor them using the factor theorem and using long division. So we can quickly check which binomials might be factors of a given polynomial. For example, checking if x minus 2 is a factor of p of x, I need to evaluate p of 2. And p of 2 would be 2 times 2 cubed plus 3 times 2 squared minus 3 times 2 minus 2. So when I evaluate p of 2, I end up with 20, which tells me that x minus 2 is not a factor. And I'll leave it to you to try the other three on your own. But this should lead us to a bigger problem, which is how do we determine what numbers we're going to use to test to see if a given binomial is a factor. So here I picked negative 2, positive 2, positive 1, negative 1. But I could just as easily be picking 5, 10, a million to check. So how do I really narrow down and only pick values that I think will be a direct factor of the polynomial rather than just guessing and checking? So let's consider this polynomial, x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. I could choose a value, x minus b, that would satisfy p evaluated at b equals 0. And this would also satisfy, if I sub in b for x, b cubed plus 2b squared minus 5b minus 6 equals 0. And I could rearrange this equation and bring that minus 6 to the other side. And then I could factor out of my left-hand side a common factor of b, which gives me a product, b times this quadratic. If I pick integer values of b, so negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2, the value of this quadratic would also be an integer. It's not going to become a fraction or a decimal. And since I know that this product has to equal 6, the possible values of the factor are all of the factors of 6. So my possible values that make this statement, p of b equals 0, true, are either plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, or plus or minus 6. All factors of 6. This leads to a theorem called the integral 0 theorem, which is stated here in Math Talk. but it's a little bit easier to understand if we do a real example. So let's say I want to factor this fully. The first thing I need to do is find some factor, x minus b, <coughs> that satisfies the condition p evaluated at b equals 0. 
integral zero theorem states that by looking at that constant term, the only possible values of b that will make this statement equal zero are the factors of six. So plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, and plus or minus six. So I'm going to evaluate p at one and see what I get. And you don't need to um, show work to do this. You can just test this directly on your calculator. When I evaluate p at 1, I get negative 8. So I'll test p at negative 1. And when I test p at negative 1, I get a value of 0, which means that x plus 1 is a factor. So once I've found my first factor, I'll start my long division. Running through my long division, I know I need to multiply x by x squared to make it become x cubed. x squared times 1 is just x squared, subtracting. I get a value of x squared, bring down the negative 5x. So x times x would be equal to x squared. Subtracting, I get negative 6x, bring down the negative 6. If I multiply x by negative 6, Get negative 6x minus 6. Subtract those. There's my remainder of 0. So my polynomial has become x plus 1 times x squared plus x minus 6. I want to try and factor this fully. So now I can use the methods of factoring that you would have learned in grade 11 math. So two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to positive 1, I think those two numbers are 3 and negative 2. So there I've factored that polynomial fully. So that original polynomial has become x plus 1 times x plus 3 times x minus 2.